In our first story, members of a group calling itself Delta Force of the New Patriotic Party Friday attacked the new regional security liaison officer and handed him out of his office. Members of the group, numbering about 200, stormed the office of the Regional Security uh, Council and broke the louver blades and vandalized some furniture and mishandled others. Georgia J uh, mishandled Georgia J in the process. It took the intervention of the police who followed uh, the demonstration to the Regional Coordinating Council to rescue him. Labour Firm's Erastus Asari Donko has more. We are here at the Regional Security Coordinating Council and to my left here is the office of the Regional Security Coordinator. Now the new Regional Security Board, who is in the person of George Ajay, was appointed by the President and started work on Monday. Now this afternoon, some men came in here, stormed in through that entrance, climbed up there and indicated that they do not want this person, George Ajay, as Regna Security Coordinator. They do not agree with the President on his appointment and so they are in here to force him out. I understand it resulted in some chaos as they tried to manhandle him and in the process one of them cut himself with the louver blades broken up there. So you can see blood all over on the floor from here leading up to the Regional Security Coordinator's office. It took the intervention of the Kumasi Central Police to rescue him and send him to the Regional Central Police Command and that is where he is currently. So it's about uh, uh, some of the political appointment uh, brouhaha okay. they are not happy with the president's appointment and they actually stormed in here to kick him out I'm a minister, I'm a fair person. Minister, I catch a say, I'm a president inside a Capipano. Yantevi, yes, I'm a beam. Minister, Saboya, see a puppy pambra, and the people are ever sending some minister, Eric Quaker. Yet you are, you are a man who was starting to be a young panel, or be your office away. Oyajma, yes, we am Pepper Sabasa. I'm not a prayer, but I'm not a prayer. We have petitioned the minister earlier, and he assured us. The president will receive our plea. We sent letters to him and some party officers. We have realized the man we have rejected has commenced work. When we stayed in the bush and were beaten by the police, we did not see the man. We want our party leaders to intervene. When we met Kandapa, what he said didn't go down well with us. He should come back to us with a good message. He knows how we suffered to bring the party to power. We want everyone to know we do not like him. And whenever he comes to the office, we will be here to pull him out. We will treat him the same way the traditional authorities treated the former mayor. <laughs> The regional police command has acknowledged notice of the incident but says its failed team is investigating ASP in Kitiyaboa as the police public relations officer for the regional command. The, t the details fit in uh, very sketchy. The regional commander has sent the operational team there to see to the normalization of developments there. Um, we are yet to get what really has happened. Our, that is the Ashanti Regional Police Crime Scene team has also moved in to the scene of the disturbances. But nobody has been arrested. As I said earlier on, a news that is trickling in all information richness. Our action unit is there. Our crime scene people are there uh, putting pieces together. Uh, definitely such crimes, the perpetrators will know that police will come after them. So uh, by the time police reached there, none of them was available. 
Now, barely 24 hours after his massive endorsement as mayor of Accra, Mohamed Nia J. Soa, accompanied by the Greater Accra Regional Minister, has toured the capital to assess measures in place to prepare ahead of the rains. Matilda Wemaga has more. 21 major drains in the Greater Accra region are currently undergoing massive dredging to ensure free flow of flood water during the rains. In areas such as Nima, the Kwame Nkrumah Circle Enclave, Odona, the Accra Graphic Road, Choko, Dansuman and Malam are key flood prone areas which have most of their drains being dredged. The mayor of Accra, Nadmo officials, together with the regional minister, were on assessment tour to check the state of work. The mayor of Accra, Mohamed Nia J. Soa, is confident ongoing measures will reduce flooding the capital. Once the desultan is going on, uh, we may have less floods. But uh, I think Ghanaians also should assure us that uh, they will stop uh, dumping refuse into the, into the drains. Uh, they will also cover the sand in their community so that it will not road into the drains. So it's a win-win situation. Once you help us, we'll also help you. Uh, as part of my, my plans at the AMA is to consider alternative use of uh, waste because oftentimes if the, if the refuse collectors are unable to collect the waste, people also dump the waste into the drains. Once we make waste um, to be something that can generate cash also to individuals at back home, I'm sure that uh, people will not be excited to dump the waste also into, into the drains. The Greater Accra Regional Minister Ishmael Ashiti says resources are available to support ongoing works. Do them in bits. Uh, it will, there will come a time that we should be able to prevent this flooding that has been occurring in Accra over the years. So it's a good exercise. They are, they are dredging, which is very good. We are also learning first and the problems uh, associated with uh, the flooding. And uh, uh, even laymen could see that there are some issues that we can easily resolve. Operations manager of Dredge Masters, Engineer Senna Diepena says they will ensure work on the drains are completed on schedule. At, at the moment we, have, we haven't completed any of the drains but we've been able to improve flow as it is now in some of the drains. So work is still ongoing and we are hoping to finish within maximum say two months complete all the rains are already here with us, yes, but looking at the extent of work that has been done within this period, do yes. you think we are prepared for it? Yes, uh, if uh, the challenges of uh, the human activities along these drains, they, uh, for they, set, they, serve, they, they impede uh, work flow, you understand? When we have to work along the drain, you have these settlements along which we have to relocate out to the downtime, but then we are doing our best in our capacity as uh, dredging experts to desilt in record time as you have it because there are a lot of drains. For Joy News, Matilda Humaga, Accra. Meanwhile, the National Disaster Management Organization says it is ready in terms of resources and funds in the eventuality of floods when the rains set in. Greater Accra Regional Coordinator Archibald Kobina assured of government's commitment to protect lives and property. A lot of cars that are parked, you ride beside the drains, a lot of cars that, old cars, sometimes the mechanics, they park cars there for several days, hours, years, and all of that, all of those things become blockade. And then we have containers as well that are also all blocking water and all of that. That should be the next step. Once we're doing the disability, we want to see that all of those things are cleared. Uh, people who are selling scraps around the drain areas, all of those things must move because we need to save life and property. We need to make sure that this time round, like His Excellency the President has, uh, has said, that every single life is important, that we need to make sure that no life is lost. Properties are also saved. And that is what we want to do. And I think we are up to the tax. We all, we all got uh, into office 
uh, just quite recently and we are all up to the task because the president is expecting us to deliver and when we cannot fail the people of this country we cannot fail his excellency the president Vice President Dr. Mohamedou Balmia has hinted that the Kufuado government will, in the coming days, roll out the Barracks Regeneration Project uh, to address the accommodation needs of the military. Under the policy, old accommodation will be renovated and new ones would be built to accommodate the many military personnel facing these uh, challenges. Dr. Balmia, who was reviewing uh, officer at the graduation ceremony of the Special Medical Intake 3 at the Military Academy in Teshi, also commended the military for the swift deployment to the then Gambia to maintain peace and rule of law. In all, 99 health professionals who took part in the five months military training successfully graduated. Vice President Dr. Muhammad Baumia, who reviewed the graduates and delivered a speech on behalf of President Akufuado, commended the military for the swift manner in which they deployed officers to the then troubled Gambia to maintain law and order. My government will continue to count on the professionalism of the armed forces in the performance of your constitutional role of defending the territorial integrity of our country as well as the performance of the task both locally and internationally distinguished guests i would like to use this opportunity to thank the military high command for the prompt manner you responded to the call to deploy a combat team to the gambia and assist in creating an enabling environment for the effective enforcement of rule of law. You demonstrated your professionalism once more by marshalling requ the required number of troops and logistics to facilitate the deployment. He also charged the graduates to continue to maintain the enviable reputation of the military by exhibiting best practices in all their engagements. He also promised the Kufuado led administration will, in the coming days, roll out what he described as barracks regeneration project to address the accommodation needs of the military personnel. I am reliably informed that accommodation remains a critical challenge for the personnel of the armed forces. It is my government's plan to roll out a comprehensive housing program dubbed the barracks regeneration project to address the accommodation needs of our dependable soldiers. Under this project, old accommodations will be renovated while new ones will be built to accommodate more military personnel. The chief training officer spoke with Joy News, expressing confidence in the academy and promised to do more in shaping health personnel in the West African sub-region to fit into the military. We have doctors, specialists and all that. So all these people have been trained and will be used to be um, staff in the medical hospitals that we have. Would you say the academy is equipped enough to continue discharging its core mandate? Oh, certainly. The academy is well, um, well charged and we are, we are ready to discharge all our, our duties. World class? Oh, we are one of the best in Africa. So, I mean, we've trained people from all over the world. The overall best students spoke with Joy News. It has been very difficult, but by the grace of God, we are here today and we are very happy. Where do you see yourself in the next, say, five years? The next five years? <laughs> That's a difficult question. Um, I, I want to be the best I can be in the, in the, in the service. That's so it is interesting when the MC read out your details and the interesting bits was your favorite meal dog meat yes my favorite meal is chuzafi and beto soup and i also like the dog meat <laughs> most of the graduates will be deployed to the kumase military hospital after satisfying all basic requirements by the high command You're still watching Joy News Prime. We're taking a short break, but still to come, the committee set up by the Energy Ministry to review the agreement between the government of Ghana and Ameri is recommending government invites the company back.
to the negotiating table. Details coming up after the break. You're welcome back. Now, the committee set up by the Energy Ministry to review the agreement between the Ghana government and the African Middle East Resources Investment Group, Ameri, is recommending government invites the company back to the negotiating table. The committee's report, a copy of which has been intercepted by Joy News, reveals the project is being financed by a Turkish company. You would recall the agreement was signed under the Mahabma administration in February 2018. 15 as part of government's measures to boost power supply at the height of the power crisis. My colleague Kweko Superfra joins me in the studio uh, with details of that report. So Kweko, we do know that this committee was set up uh, last month, February 2015, I believe, by the Energy Minister uh, to review this agreement. What were their terms of agreement? They were basically, I'm, I'm sorry, terms of reference, rather. They were basically to review, restructure, and recommend details or detailed areas in the agreement that um, were to evaluate whether the contract was in the interest of the country. Mm -hmm. So they went in and did several meetings, and they found out very, very interesting and um, startling uh, revelations. One is the fact that the Turkish company PPR, which um, worked on the project, actually charged less than what was actually billed onto the government um, 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 budget. So the recommendation, one of them key, is that the company is supposed to come back, Ameri is supposed to come back to the negotiation table and then for government to reevaluate what went into the processes of the charging. Mm -hmm. So that is one critical thing that has come out, out of this um, reevaluation and analysis of the contract agreement. And what's the name of this Turkish uh, company that's actually executing and financing the project? PPR. PPR. I see. I see. All right. Many thanks, uh, Kweko Superfra, as Joy News Editor, bringing us that, those details. And as you heard, that the Energy Ministry uh, Committee that was set up by the Energy Ministry to review the Ameri Agreement between the government of Ghana and Ameri uh, is recommending government invites the company back to the negotiating table. Now let's go over to Parliament because the House has been debating the earmarked funds capping and realignment bill that will allow it to redirect money from various uh, statutory funds to the Finance Ministry for the financing of various government projects. The GET Fund, District Assembly, Common Fund, NHIS Fund, among others, will be affected by the new law. A cap will also be placed on how much internally generated funds various MMDAs can spend, whilst the rest will be sent to the Finance Ministry. Majority Chief Whip Muntaka, Minority Chief Whip Muntaka Mubara, criticized the new law. If Parliament was to take every single activity in the budget to interrogate it and approve them, we will never be able to have a budget. There have been many times, he knows, that because the chunk of what is in the budget is accepted by all, we let go. It is the reason why we as a house decided that when, when it came to the two and a half percent that we were going to tax the people of this country for get funds, we decided to say that this one, there's budget, but come with a formula. So that we will interrogate it in detail with regard to what it will be used for. The same with health insurance fund and common fund. Now you say, let's cap it, and let's, with a greater respect, the Minister of Finance in the budget come to tell us how he intends to operationalize it. Mr. Speaker, I think that this is not fair. Let's be fair to ourselves. Mr. Speaker, even in the worst form, the minister's attempt to realign the idea. Because at this house, periodically, the same minister of finance comes to this house with the fees and charges, are seeking our approval to approve what every agency could charge for what service they are giving. And in that, we we'll then go to say that, oh, in, with this agency, because of A, B, C, D, you can keep 50%. This one you can keep 70%. This one you can keep 30%. Or don't keep anything at all. Now you use an unpaid document 
and all of a sudden you want to rubbish what we have done in a document that is more than 300 pages. Mr. Speaker, that is my worry. Well, minority leader Harina Idrisu expressed concern the new law will deprive local authorities adequate resources for development. Mr. Speaker, I can only describe this as an unimaginative and inept attempt by a hunter who goes to find an elephant dead, and what he goes for is just a task of the elephant. And so the Minister of Finance have conveniently gone in for the task of the elephant. Uh, he is not coming with new innovation in order to raise additional revenue. One other way to solve the rigidities is additional revenue. One can understand that given the tax threshold of our country, it is not the way to go. Given the state of the private sector of Ghana, it is not the way to go. But for him to understand that he didn't sow the seeds, the Ghana Education Trust Fund, what is the defect of the law? Have we achieved the core object? of the establishment of the Ghana Education Transfer? The answer is no. And therefore, when you come to cap it, as if all is well and all has been done with get fund. That is not the case. Either for free compulsory universal basic education, we have not achieved it. Access, relevant, and quality higher education, we have not achieved it. The Honorable uh, 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 Minister for Monetary Evaluation, you recall our encounter in 1997 at Akusumbo, which led to the emergence of the Ghana Education Trust Fund. It was one for which we engaged the Ghanaian public and the public alike to accept that a certain portion of revenue be dedicated, indeed, not to supplement to supplement rather, but not to complement what was the consolidated fund doing for education. So when you say defect, has get fund achieved its core objective? The answer is no. Get fund today has arrears, and I'm sure many members of parliament, including communities, are yearning for additional school infrastructure. If you cannot add to it, don't cut it and don't reduce it. But Finance Minister Ken Oferiata is defending the bill. He says it's necessary to allow government invest money in crucial areas for social economic development. Mr. Speaker, dedicating large predetermined percentages of tax revenue for predetermined future uses creates rigidity and credibility problems for budget implementation. For example, in 2016, 14-year mark funds took up to 32.9% of tax revenue, up from 28.2% in 2015. This rigid dedication of tax revenue means that government's ability to shift public spending from one expenditure line to another is hindered, even where current exigencies require government to do so. Consequently, it has become difficult to use public spending as an instrument to respond adequately to changing public needs. Here to this new proposal, Mr. Speaker, the rigidities in our budget implementation was compounded by the fact that the country's total revenue was virtually consumed by three main budgetary lines, wages and salaries, interest payments and amortization, and earmark funds. Let's stay in Parliament because the leadership of the House has assured MPs security in the House will be boosted to help protect them. MP for Ifutu Alexander Afenyo Markings drew the House's attention to the recent terrorist attack on the UK's Parliament and called for measures to ensure MPs' safety. Listen to him and Deputy Majority Leader Adra Safo. Mr. Speaker, if you come to Parliament, the situation is very different. And it is important for this to be brought to the attention of the House. Considering what happened three days ago in the United Kingdom, where something so bad happened in front of Parliament House, and if you look at Daily Guide, page 5, World Leaders Show Solidarity with London, a person attempting to drive into a crowd. Mr. Speaker, 
in our house here, all manner of individuals come in and go out. I do not think that we have to wait for an unpalatable situation to occur before we take steps. We are aware that we lost a member a year ago because of some individual moving into his house at midnight to attack him. We expressed concerns. Another honorable member, Honorable Dambuche, was attacked. And Mr. Speaker, today, members of parliament, including parliament as an institution, need sufficient security. And we believe that this matter ought to be looked at critically. On the security of members of parliament, in light of concerns that has been raised by my honorable member for a Futu is well noted. Many of us also share similar sentiments that the security within the premises of parliament ought to be tightened up so that um, we all feel secured as we carry out our business in the house. There's been some major improvements from the previous parliament, the previous session, now there are security checkpoints at various areas. But I agree, and we have a police post also there. But I very much agree that indeed there's more that we ought to do, especially around our coffee area or tea area. People just trooping left, right, centre, and so. Leadership has taken note of those concerns and we will work together with the whips to ensure that security is tightened. You're still watching Join News Prime and still ahead, students of a vocational technical school in the Dafiama Busie Issa district of the Upper West Region beat up the school's bursa in a demonstration Thursday night over quality of food there. We have details when we return. Demonstration. You're welcome back. Now, work has started on a multi-purpose building to house all units of the French government in Ghana. Completion of the project next year will bring to end operations of the French embassy from a location close to the seat of government, the Flagstaff House. At a brief ceremony to start construction work, President Ekufuado applauded Ghana and France for smooth negotiations leading to the relocation of the embassy. Only a concrete wall separates the French embassy from the seat of government, the Flagstaff House, raising security concerns while negotiations for relocation, which started in 2007, stalled until now. Cutting the sword for the work to start on the project, President Akufuado recounted anxious moments that characterized the discussions for the relocation. It is an enriching experience and a moment of considerable joy to witness this occasion as it will be recalled the negotiations for the relocation of the French embassy have been saddled with mixed feelings and a certain undue amount of anxieties. Change can be uncomfortable. However, this change from the old site to the current location has occurred within manageable limits. France Ambassador to Ghana Francois Pujola says the construction of a new facility will further strengthen relations between Ghana and France. This is a uh very symbol of the growing importance of this partnership between France and Ghana and laying foundation of the new building of the Embassy of France here in this country is also a symbol of the confidence France has in the future of these relations. This ceremony takes place in a very special year for Ghana which as you all know celebrates its 60th anniversary but also special for our bilateral relationships as it was said we also do celebrate 60 years of diplomatic relations the project is expected to be completed in 18 months okay. <laughs> 
Now, if you didn't know about the Africa CEO Forum, a storm that brewed on social media on its venue may have drawn your attention to it. Organizers say it's a unique platform for discussing the economic and industrial challenges facing the African continent and attended by scores of CEOs of the largest African and international uh, companies, political decision makers, among others. This year, the choice of venue, the Swiss capital, Geneva, attracted criticisms from some Ghanaians who felt the event ought to have been held in Africa, given that African CEOs were the main target. President Okufuado was one of two main key speakers at the event, and not everyone is happy he chose that over a similar program being hosted by the British Council in Accra. Vice President of UNICEF and Life Peer in the UK House of Lords, Dr. Michael Hastings, who was keynote speaker at the Enterprise Africa Summit in Accra, said the president should have chosen to attend the summit rather than the Geneva program as he spelt out what an entrepreneur is. It takes a whole ton of guts and imagination and energy to be an entrepreneur. If you don't have that, you're not an entrepreneur. You're just a guy who's trading out there or a woman who wants to be on the make, in which place, please go and live in Switzerland. Now, talking of Switzerland, and I say it delicately because I'm sure this was an important conference for the president to be at, but he didn't make it here this morning, but he found his way to the CEO forum in Switzerland for the last three days. There they all are gathered, the extremities of the African business enterprise model and the presidents of various countries. I have something to say for them. Switzerland is not in Africa. If we're interested in enterprise Africa, this is the place to come. Right? And I think, if anything, the deputy should have gone to Switzerland and the president should have come here. But you can tell him that. So some harsh words there from uh, Dr. Michael Hastings. He's the vice president of UNICEF and life peer in the UK House of Lords. And he was speaking earlier Friday at the Enterprise Africa Summit in Accra. Well, we do know that uh, President Ikufuado, addressing the forum in Geneva, pointed out that too much of Africa's development has been centered on events outside the continent uh, and that there was a need to focus more on what's taking place on the continent uh, and inside our countries. Well, moving on, the Office of the Meteorological Service in the Upper West Region is in dire need of new equipment and staff. According to the Meteorological Service Officer in charge of the region, some of the equipment are obsolete and need to be changed. He also expressed concern over inadequate staff strength, compelling them to combine administrative work with other observation duties. Rafik Salam has more. The Upper West Office of the Meteorological Service was established over 60 years ago to provide efficient weather and climate service by collecting, processing, achieving and disseminating meteorological information to end users. Over the years, they have worked to ensure they live up to their mandate using traditional and obsolete equipment. I visited the Upper West Office to see how they work in their bid to focus the weather for the people. I was conducted around the office by the office technical observer, Ebenezer Ade. Screen we are just standing by is called Stevenson screen. That is where all the thermometers are being kept, just to prevent it from the direct sunshine because we are using the thermometers to measure the temperature of the moving air. And when you go into the uh, screen, we have two different type of thermometers. We have mercury thermometers and then alcohol thermometer. The, the mercury thermometers are the two upstanding ones, the yellow ones. We have what we call dry bulb and then wet bulb thermometer. The dry bulb helps us to record the temperature of the dry air and then the wet bulb also records the temperature of the wet air. With the two readings, we are able to calculate for the humidity percentage in the atmosphere. It helps us also to measure the vapor pressure and then the dew point temperature. Upper West Regional Officer in charge of the Meteorological Service, Sam Amanijichi, stated that despite the obsolete equipment at his outfit, they are able to live up to expectation. He however noted that for the office to carry out its vision to be a leading meteorological institution that is at the cutting edge of climate research 
with the capacity to provide reliable, timely, and relevant weather and climate information to inform policy choices in weather sensitive sectors of the economy of the country, it needs to be equipped with modern equipment. It's uh, 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 old equipments which are due for replacement and uh, because of uh, non-availability we, we, may, we don't have them like a uh, maximum thermometer uh, which is broken and uh, we don't have replacement I mean this is uh, one of the challenge for the resource yes because they are not those that are available they are not uh, uh, down outright, they are still uh, effective. Another key challenge they are facing is the low number of staff and will want it to be increased to ensure they work efficiently. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Well, speaking of the weather, don't seek shelter under trees during rainstorm. Well, that's a warning coming from the Director of Research at the Ghana Meteorological Agency, Charles York. Mr. York explains, during rainstorms, lightning can strike some trees and subsequently electrify the immediate grounds, electrocuting anyone around the tree. Mr. York suggests this phenomenon possibly accounts for the disaster at the Kintampo waterfalls. You have to take shelter. You don't run under tall trees because these are... Um, uh, the, the, it's, uh, Latin flashes are electricity in the atmosphere mm -hmm. and so the tall tree will take it and the base of the tree becomes electrified and so if you find yourself over there you, you, you become electrocuted mm -hmm. it, it kills you instantly and so the advice is that when these things form you don't run under tall trees mm -hmm. or take shelter at a place where there are so many metals, uh, metallic poles, you don't go and lean over it, or even uh, coconut trees, because the coconut tree will take it, because maybe it is the tallest object uh, around the vicinity. Mm -hmm. And so it takes it, and then it, 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 the base of it becomes electrified, and you become electrocuted. Mm -hmm. If, for example, your antenna, your TV is not working well you don't climb over your burden to fix it mm. because you be, then become the taller object over there and it can also kill you and so it is so 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 dangerous now, the, the situation at Kintampo, um you know the tree breaking and then falling on those kids could there be a possibility of you know some tender striking the tree and that happening you no know? yeah i overheard uh, one of uh, the uh, those who were giving account of uh, what happened at Kentampo saying that there were lightning flashes. It is possible that once they run under a tall tree and with the gusty winds, the, the base of the tree could be electrified together with the uh, gusty winds that pulled the, uh, the tree down. Uh, may be the cause of uh, the havoc that occurred at Kentampo. This is Joy News Prime. The headlines at the top of the hour. Members of a group calling itself Delta Force of the New Patriotic Party Friday attacked the new regional security liaison officer of the Ashanti region and hounded him out of his office. Barely 24 hours after his swearing in, Accra mayor embarks on assessment tour of ongoing dredging projects of major drains ahead of the rains. Also, the committee set up by the Energy Ministry to review the agreement between Government of Ghana and Ameri is recommending government invites the company back to the negotiating table. In business, financial stakeholders upbeat City's recent appreciation will be sustained and have expressed confidence current indications will lead to a reduction in the policy rate by the central bank. Now, students of a vocational technical school in the Dafiama Busier Issa district of the Upper West Region have beaten up the school's bursar in a demonstration Thursday night over food. 
Bismarck and Ponsa was rushed to a nearby clinic and later transferred to the WA Regional Hospital. Speaking in an exclusive interview with Joy News, the WA Divisional Commander of the Ghana Police Service, Chief Superintendent Stephen Tanin Gisa said, a spontaneous demonstration started by some of the students over the quality of food served them at the dining hall led to the beating and injuring of the Bursa N4 students. This is not the first time such an incident has occurred. On two occasions, the students seized all mobile phones of their principals and tied them to a tree for several hours. Rafiq Salam has more in this report. According to the War Divisional Commander of the Ghana Police Service, Chief Superintendent Stephen Tani Ingisa, the incident started around late evening on Thursday when some students of the Issa Youth Leadership staged a demonstration at the institute on two reasons. One on the quality of the food prepared at the dining hall and the other being ICT fees levied on the students when they have neither seen a mouse nor a monitor in their classroom.